We were going through the Kavanaugh hearing, and a lot of people saying, yes, she has a right to be heard, but there should be a presumption of innocence. There should be due process. And as I was hearing that, I said, yeah, absolutely there should be. And you know, there should be a presumption of innocence and due process for us as well. Uh, it should be there before we allow the government to take our property, our cars, our homes, our cash under the war on drugs. They call that civil asset forfeiture. In virtually all these cases, well, in all the cases uh, that nobody is convicted of a crime, that's why they call it civil. They don't call it criminal. There is no presumption of innocence. There is no due process. They take your stuff. You have to sue them to get it back. Now, they don't even charge you with a crime. They just steal your stuff. And I also said it also holds true. It's even worse when they steal our children without due process. And then you have to sue them to get your children back. And in the meantime, some really horrific things have happened to children that have been kidnapped by CPS. We're talking to Dwight Mitchell. He's joining us in this segment. Uh, this happened to him as a father. He got upset about this, and as he was doing this fight, he found out that it was more than just some rogue bureaucrats that he was involved in. He realized that it was very widespread where he lived in Minnesota. And then he realized that it was a national problem as well, very large problem. He then began a foundation, and you can find information about that foundation. It's called uh, Stop CPS Legally Kidnapping Children. It goes by the initials. S C P S L K C legally kidnapping children. So you can find that on Twitter at S C P S L K C. And also their website uh, is S C P S L K C dot org. Joining us now is Dwight Mitchell. Thank you for joining us again, sir. Thank you for having me, David. Uh, we got some pictures that you sent to us of the case that got quite a bit of media coverage. Amanda Weber's case. Uh, it was back, uh, when was it? I think it was in uh, back in June, I think, when I first saw the stories about how her child was kidnapped and eventually she was vindicated uh, in late September. I reported on this a couple of weeks ago uh, where the judge uh, shut this down. But tell people, since uh, you know about this particular case, right, it happened in uh, your area. You've got some pictures of Amanda being reunited with her 10-month-old son. Tell the audience what happened to her. It's an absolutely outrageous story. It's interesting, uh, you know, when I started uh, our 501c3 Family Preservation Foundation and, and then our, our program, which is Stop CPS from Literally Kidnapping Children, people didn't believe what I was saying. I, I found it interesting yeah. that everyone said, well, if you're, if you're involved with CPS, you must have done something wrong. And yeah. I said, that's <laughs> not the case. And so we need to show them exactly, you know, what, what, what's happening. So Amanda happened to call me the day after her son was taken. She presented the evidence. They, they took her son from medical neglect. She provided me with two hospital reports that said her son was 100% fine. Um, I said, okay, I'm gonna take this case and I'm going to show the American public and, and, and the Minnesota officials exactly what is, what is going on. The most uh, disparaging part about this whole thing, David, is that the same medical reports that we presented on her very first day at court uh, on June 1st, we filed a um, uh, opposition uh, to the petition to remove him from her home, uh, Jalen from the Home for Medical Neglect. We provided the medical reports that they used at trial. We didn't present any new evidence. Uh, you know, the judge ruled it just that took was them four months to go through this process, and in the meantime. The child had been kidnapped and was away from her, uh, from his mother. He's only 10 months old and staying with strangers. And in many cases, uh, the people that CPS has been using are, are not people that you would ever want to have anywhere close to your children. But That's they correct. don't do the due process first. They kidnap the kids. In this particular case, it was a medical kidnapping. She had gone to the hospital, a children's hospital, because her child had a cough. Tell us a little bit about how that came out, because it's absolutely amazing what the nurse and what this doctor did to steal her child from her uh, working with CPS. Well, she was in the hospital and she took her son in for a cough and they said her son was fine. They said, let's keep him overnight for observation just to make sure nothing is wrong. She said, that's fine. They gave him a discharge of a physical in the morning and she was waiting for this second doctor to, to, um, to, to, to discharge her son. And so 
after an hour and a half, she went and said, listen, I want to go. I have my, my three-year-old, my 10-month-old. They're tired. They want to go home and go to sleep. How much longer is it going to take? They said, well, the doctor's going to come uh, up eventually. He'll be here soon. He's making rounds. So at trial, the doctor said they didn't prioritize her for, for discharge because, you know, it was an emergency situation. So they basically were not just going to let her you know, sit around and wait for them to get there. She decides to leave the hospital. The doctor calls her nurse practitioner, Cassandra Voida, and this nurse practitioner supplies all this disinformation to the social worker and calls CPS saying the child is in a real, you know, has a real risk of dying. So once this was done, CPS got involved. The, 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 the heinous part about this is that CPS took the child before they even performed a medical examination, told the mother, you're not getting the child back, we we're removing it for you immediately. No physical, wow. nothing whatsoever. They had the foster parent waiting in the doctor's office when the mother arrived. Then they yeah. took the child to the hospital without the mother, got a full physical, had the child stay in overnight again. That's the second hospital report. Found out the child was fine and still kept the child. Now, there was no exigent circumstances. They knew the child was fine, and they didn't return it to the mother the next day. They kept the child for 120 days, and that's exactly what we're talking about. And the judge allowed this to happen. And so I'm looking you know, at this story. That he was there. He was kept for four months, as you point out. You know, she had gone to the doctor. She had waited, and then, the, you know, she had kids that were with her, and uh, she wanted to get them home as well. And it was four months and six court dates. And as you said at the very beginning, there was no additional evidence that was presented except what you had at the very beginning. They found no health problems whatsoever. They still kidnapped this 10-month-old, kept him for four months, and made uh, uh, her go to court six different times to try to prove this. The, the judge said that the doctor and the social worker had acted in bad faith and with malice, with malice, obviously. Well, what was what was fascinating in my uh, opinion is that we supplied the judge with the information, and so there's a prima facie case that the, the state has to test to show, and that's the part that we're saying is wrong in Minnesota. They do not have to cooperate the evidence or present it to the court like they do in other states, like in Wisconsin. In Wisconsin, you can't remove a child until you actually supply the court with some information that corroborates that the child is in harm or in need of services. Minnesota doesn't have that requirement. Minnesota says someone can make allegations, and purely on these allegations, we can remove your child, and we don't have to present any evidence for the removal until 120 days. Now, Minnesota gives you the opportunity to destroy the prima facie, and we kept presenting this evidence to the judge, and the judge kept denying the, the, uh, the request. So we put in two oppositions. We filed a motion to dismiss. We filed another motion that this was unconstitutional. So we tried four different ways, four different times, to get this dismissed in the 120 days, and Judge Weller kept saying no, 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 no. And then at trial, he says, well, there's no medical net. I'm going to give the child back. And we're sitting here wow. going, like, you knew this in the very beginning. You had the same information now that you had 120 days ago. You kept trying to give CPS the opportunity to try and prove the allegations. Yeah. And then when they couldn't. And, and, and let me ask you this, Dwight. Do you think it, uh, that uh, he suddenly changed because this got national attention? No, not, not whatsoever. He actually, he, it was just, we were astonished. He actually admonished Amanda for not cooperating. Amanda was like, I don't have to cooperate. <laughs> I don't need your service. You could have got more services if you were cooperating. Hey. He's like, hey. I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't need to. All right, we got to take a break, but when we come back, let's let's broaden this out because we talk about these individual cases, and we could talk about Dwight's case, but I want to show you a picture of all the children that he's rescued so far, just in that area. There it is, right there. And we're going to talk about how this is much bigger than just one judge, one hospital, one case. And why our children ought to get due process, not just Brett Kavanaugh. Welcome back. We're talking to Dwight Mitchell. He has had the government come after him, take his child without due process. He saw other people were having the same thing done. We just talked about the case of Amanda Weber, who had her 10-month-old stolen, medically kidnapped uh, using CPS. Took four months to get her back, six court appearances. Nothing changed from the beginning to the end. But they couldn't get due process. And so when we look at these situations, we look at Me Too and 
all the controversy about Brett Kavanaugh. Maybe we need a hashtag that says parents too. Hashtag parents too. Because parents are not getting due process either. And it's very important that we don't allow these types of things to happen in our country, especially to our children. And this is a very large uh, problem. Uh, We've got a picture here that Dwight sent us of a rally that happened on Tuesday. And, of course, uh, he's fighting back. Uh, Dwight uh, fought back, got his child back, and now he's working to help other people get their children back. If you want to find out more about how you can help, he set up a foundation called the Family Preservation Foundation. And you can find them on Twitter at S for Stop, uh, Stop CPS Legally Kidnapping Kids. So it's S CPS LKC, Legally Kidnapping Kids. And you can find the same thing on the website, uh, S CPS LKC. Org. And as I'm looking at that picture of the rally, Dwight, uh, somebody is holding up a sign there that says only 17% of accu- accusations are ever substantiated. 83% of kids in the foster system are wrongly taken from parents by CPS. And, of course, those 83% of the kids uh, that are taken, uh, if they do uh, get the kids back, it's after long detention. In some cases, some horrific things happen. I've got a case here in front of me. Uh, that happened in Arizona. A child was removed from a loving family, placed into foster care where she was repeatedly raped, and then 80% of her body was burned. That's in Arizona. Talk about the nature of this, how large it is, and what is the motivation behind these bureaucrats, uh, behind these hospitals who are kidnapping uh, individuals. It's funny you should mention that because just a few weeks ago, Michael Beckett, who is the uh, assistant director of North Carolina DHS actually said that they have known for years that separating children from family causes uh, trauma to the children and the families, and that now they are putting in a, a, a plan uh, based on the new Family First initiative to work to keep the children in the home. And Molly McGrath, the director of the Baltimore uh, DHS, on her, on her TEDx talk, which is phenomenal. I recommend everyone to go and look at that if they really want to truly understand what's going on. It's, it's Molly McGrath. But she says that the only time that CPS gets paid is when they're taking your children. That's the way the system is set up. Mm-hmm. And so we have these two directors who are saying that this is the way the system works. It's wrong, and it needs to be changed. So... And Molly McGrath actually said there's 50 agencies in the U.S. You see, there's not one that's doing it correctly. So wow. I started this in Minnesota, you know, to try and provide, like, legal aid. So we started the, the group, which has grown from 250 people to 5,000 people in less than 120 days. You can't tell me that 5,000 people in Minnesota are going to mysteriously just come out of the woodworks and something is not wrong with the system. Yeah. So what we're trying to do is to hire more lawyers. We started a fundraiser to uh, hire staff lawyers because we said we need lawyers working on this full time. They took 15,004 children last year. Now, the national average is 84 percent are taken from just social worker discretion. Only 12 percent are actually alleged to have physical abuse and 4 percent are actually alleged to have sexual abuse. The other 84 percent is just purely social worker discretion. In Minnesota, they don't have to prove anything to trial. And they drag it out and drag it out and do whatever they can to keep those children. So we're trying to combat that by hiring staff lawyers. And, you know, our goal is to get seven in Minneapolis, in the, in the, in the Minneapolis office, and then to expand and start going to different counties. But we, we want lawyers working to help parents get their children back full time. It has been shown that with a good lawyer, the average amount of time that's spent, you know, in CPS custody or foster care is dramatically shortened. Uh, the New York City did a study. And they said that that uh, parents who had lawyers, which most of them do not, the, the time spent out in out-of-home placement is 60 to 90 days versus the ones that don't have lawyers, which is up to a year. So that's a study that, that's done by New York, who has one of the largest removal rates, and that they're trying to curb also. So this wow. is not just a, you know, a Minnesota trend. It's a national trend. We are trying to fight back. We, you know, we filed a lawsuit. That's the rally that you're actually looking at from uh, this past Tuesday. What was interesting is, is that when we were having oral arguments, the, the, the state and county government actually put forth the argument 
that we don't have standing to challenge their statutes on their constitutional basis. I'm like, what are you talking about? We are the people. That constitution applies to us. How yeah. dare you come in and say that we're nothing, we're nobody, and we don't have the ability or authority to challenge you and on what we feel are unconstitutional laws and standards. But that's what they said. We're going to get those transcripts. We're going to forward them to you. So you're going to sit here and say, wow, they actually said this. You know, you can't challenge us. We're the government. We can that's do amazing. whatever we want. Now, of course, what they'll do is they'll always take the worst-case scenarios and they say, we want to err on the side of caution. We want to take the kids away before anything happens to them in an abusive home. But uh, repeat again what you said in terms of the percentage uh, where there was allegations, uh, even even allegations of uh, violence or sexual abuse in the homes. It was only, uh, what was it, 16% or 14% or something like that? 16% are physical and 4% are sexual. And the other 84% are social worker discretion. And they, they, they put it under the you know, neglect category. Now, this is mm -hmm. not, these are not my findings. I challenge everybody, go, go out to the uh, uh, U.S. Department of Health and Human Services website. All the information is there. It's called the AFSCARS report. It's A-C-F-A-R-S. It's the report they give to Congress annually. So they have the reports going back for 10 years. So they know what's going on. And it's just, I said, show me the percentage of cases where the parent is actually found guilty. Well, I'm having a very difficult time getting those numbers. All oh, you probably have to sue them for that. Infant. They're not going to give that up uh, uh, voluntarily. You have to sue them. <laughs> well, I, I, I wrote a letter for the Freedom of Information Act, and she said, well, we don't carry that information. She said, how can you not carry that information to DHS? She said, well, you need to go to the judiciary. You know, we don't determine, you know, what happens after they go into the system. We're just reporting on how many people we took in, and what category we placed them in. Mm -hmm. And so I sat and I said, well, okay, well, this is heinous because in Minnesota, the, this, you know, the disparity in the system is, is atrocious, meaning uh, Native Americans, they're 17.1 times more likely to be removed from the home. Uh, two or more races where 59% are black or 4.8 times more likely to be removed from the home. African Americans are 3.5 more times more likely, and I sit here and I and I look at the trend. They've taken over 3,000 African American out of the home, over 3,000 Native wow. American out of the home, another 1,600 Hispanics out of the home in Minnesota, and I'm sitting here going like, I'm looking at you know the the percentage per capita, and it just doesn't make sense. And what what's the trend with all of these families? They're low income, including the yeah. Caucasian. And they don't so have, the a, they don't have a ability to, to push back. Again, this case That's in correct. Arizona, this is a, a Caucasian child. And it turned out that they found in Arizona that uh, she was raped. Uh, the home, home that she was put in, she was raped. It was part of a pornographic pedophile ring. Uh, this oh is being goodness. reported by uh, medicalkidnap.com. And, and the cases in Arizona have gone through the roof in terms of uh, the number of people that they've been kidnapping the kids. It's gone up 80 percent between 2003 and 2012 in Arizona. And so there's some malicious stuff that goes on on the other side. You know, they'll always take the worst case scenario and say, well, you know, here's an allegation and we didn't do anything about it. And then the parents uh, beat or killed this child. They'll put that out there, but then they won't talk about the fact that the same thing can happen on the other side. So there has to be due process. And there has to be some legal due process. There has to be, uh, there should be uh, a, uh, a, a situation where they actually have a hearing and you've got a fair and partial hearing immediately. I mean, that, that, that kind of stuff can be done very quickly uh, to protect the child from having either of these things happen, but from leaving them in a home that they need to be removed from or to keep them from being put into a system that can be very abusive on its own, even more abusive than parents. Well, we're not saying that, you know, we're against CPS. We, we, we think there needs to be a CPS, and we, we agree that, you know, CPS is required. We're just saying present the evidence that you have. If you remove a child, mm -hmm. there should be some evidence. Even That's if you right. say, okay, we need seven days to collect it. Well, seven days is fine, you know, you know, a week or whatever. But you need to come forward. You can't right. say it's going to take us 120 oh, yeah. days and we're going to traumatize. Exactly. Allocate the, child the resources yeah. just to protect the children so they can do a, a quick, uh, speedy trial. Thank you so much for joining us. Dwight Mitchell, SCPS, LKC.